Okay, this is a short video going through how to work out the probability uh, using a triangularly distributed random variable. All right, so we've got the formula here, which, as you can see, is quite complex, but it's not as bad as it looks once we get into it. I apologize about my writing, it's really not easy to write on this thing. All right, so we're going to start off with a, with a situation where we have, I'm going to take you through three different examples. We're going to have a look at some different ways of finding the probabilities, and we're going to use those, and, and it's going to take a little bit of time because these aren't particularly fast. We're going to look three different examples, a couple of different probabilities for each example. It will be quite a long video, but once we're finished, uh, you can. but at any point you can stop and rewind and, and look at them again. Right, so we're going to start off with a really basic one where we have a nice distribution function that starts at 2, ends at 9, and has a peak at 4. All right, so we look at this one here, and the first question that we want to know is, well, what's the height? Before we do anything, before we even look at the question, we want to know what's the height there. Right, so our height in this situation is going to be 2 over b minus a. So this case it's going to be 2 over 9 minus 2, 2 over 7. Right, that's the height of the whole function. We'll just move it down here to give ourselves a little bit more room. And we're going to get a question with this one here, that is we want to find the probability that x is less than 3. All right, so to do that, the first thing that I do whenever I get one of these is I draw a diagram. Now, I've got a diagram here already, so I'm going to just draw on this diagram. So the first thing I do is I'm going to draw that, and I'm going to shade in that area. That's what I want to find. I want to find when x is less than 3. Now, we know when it's less than 0. When less than 2, the probability is 0, so we don't need to worry about that. All we care about is this area here where x is less than 3. All right. So what we're going to do to do that is we're going to create a triangle. All right, and this triangle is going to have a height of f of x or of f of 3 and a base of 3 minus 2, which is 1. So we think about, first of all, we want to find out what that height is. So the height is f of 3. Right? And because we start off by saying, well, what's our A, what's our B, what's our C? Our A is going to be 2, our B is going to be 9, and our C is going to be 4. Right? So we need to go and have a look at our formula to find out what numbers we're going to put in. So we have a look at the formula up here. The one that we care about, because it's between A and C, is going to be 2 brackets X minus A over B minus A, C minus A. So we come back over here. 2 brackets x minus a over b minus a, c minus a. Right, so now we substitute in the numbers to that f of 3 equals 2 lots of x, which is 3, minus 2, which is 2 lots of 1. 2 lots of 3 minus 2, all divided by b minus a, which is four mi no, no, 9 minus 2. 9 minus 2, and c minus a, 4 minus 2. So we get 2 times 1, which is 2 over 7 times 2, which is 14, which equals 1 seventh. All right. And I wrote 17 there when I was meaning to write 14. Okay. Okay, so we've found our height is 1 seventh. Now we need to think back to our year 10 measurement, and we know the formula for the area of a triangle is half base times height. So this is a B using differently to what we were using with the distribution. So our B here is the difference, the distance from 3 to 2, which is 1. 
So we're going to have that equals one half times one times one seventh, which equals one fourteenth. So our area is one fourteenth, and if our area is one fourteenth, then our probability that x is less than three is also equal to one fourteenth. That's the idea of the probability distribution function, is that the area under the line is the same as the probability. It's the whole point in doing them. Right. Now, if we look back at this example, we could also look at one where, instead of looking at, at x is probably x is less than 3, we could look at one here where the probability that x is greater than 5. So this time we're going to look at the probability x is greater than 5. Now the process is fairly similar for this one, except that instead of instead of using the first function formula, we use the second formula. We wanted to find this area here. So instead of finding the first formula, we're using the second formula. So the formula we're going to use for the height is the second one, 2 bracket b minus a over b, b minus x over b minus a, b minus c. Okay, so we're going to substitute our numbers into there. f of x is going to be 2 times b, which is 9, minus x, which is 5, all over 9 minus 2, 2 being our a, times 9 minus 4. because 4 is our x. Right. So, simplifying that, we've got 8 over 7 times 5, 8 over 35. Alright, so that's our height, is 8 over 35. So if we think about it back to our triangle, we've got the area equals a half times base, and in this situation, our base is going to be 9 minus 5, which is 4. Times 8 over 35. Alright, so the numbers are not quite so nice with this one, but once we multiply them out, it's, it's still relatively simple. We are going to end up with the area is 16 over 35. And if the area is 16 over 35, then that means that our probability that x is greater than 5 equals 16 over 35. Okay, the next example we're going to look at, we'll do up here somewhere, is somewhere where we have our probability is, a, rather than being a, a, a triangle with a, a peak in the middle, we have a triangle, a probability with a triangle on one edge. So here our B and our C are the same. And this is a, a probability where it increases until it reaches a certain point and then it's no longer it's no longer likely, no longer possible. So where we have our A is going to be 4, and our B and C will both be at 10. Right? And we want to find the probability that X is more than 7. Now we have a couple of options here. One of them is we could look at what's the probability, make a trapezium, where we've got the height at 7 and the height at 10, and then work out the area that way. The other option that we have is that we could look at this in terms of find the area below the line. And once we find that, 
we can then use subtract that from 1 to find the area above the line. So we're going to do it that way. I'm going to use blue here to show the one that we're going to find. So that equals 1 minus the probability x is less than 7. Right. So we'll draw in our 7 on our graph. So for this one here, we don't need to worry about the second formula. The only part of the formula that we need is the first bit. So we know that f of x is going to be equal to two lots of x minus a all over b minus a c minus a. Right, so in this case, the function of 7 is going to be 2 lots of 7 minus a, which is 7 minus 4, over b minus a, which is 10 minus 4, and then c minus a, which is also 10 minus 4, because b and c are the same. So simplifying that, we're going to get 6 over 36, and that obviously is going to simplify a little bit further down to saying that f of 7 equals 1 sixth. So once we know the function of 7, we then go back to our graph and we think about the triangle. So we've got our base here is 7 minus 4, which is 3. So the area... is going to be 1 half times the base, which is 3, times the height, which is 1 sixth. Right, so it's going to become 3 over 12, or 1 quarter. So therefore, the probability that x is less than 7 is equal to 1 quarter. Which is great, except that what we want to find is the probability that x is greater than 7. So if x is less than 7 is a quarter, then the probability that x is greater than 7 must be necessarily 3 quarters. Alright, for the last one, we're going to do a multi-step problem that involves look, finding a probability that takes either side of the curve. Right, so what we're going to do is we're, we're going to have a a fairly standard triangular distribution where it, which goes from 0 to 12 and the peak is at 3. Okay, And what we want to do is we want to find the probability that x is between 2 and 8. So to do this, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw in our line. So we're going to draw and find the area that we're trying to find. So we're wanting to find our, our distribution. It's going to be between these numbers, between 2 and 8. All right, so to do that, we're going to have to break it into two parts. Now we've got two options here. One, we could work it out as two trapeziums, or else we could work it out as two triangles. I'm not sure which is easier, which is harder. We're going to do it as two triangles, because I think it's slightly better. So we're going to colour in red the two triangles we're going to do. So we've got that one first, and we'll call that triangle one, and this one here is triangle two, in order to find triangle three. Right, and so we'll just write a little note for ourselves that area three equals area... Or equals 1 minus area 1 minus area 2. Alright, so we first of all set about finding out area 1. And area 1 is again, it's it's a one we're using the basic probability, the first the first of the probabilities. So that's the one where it's area, it's 2x minus a over b minus a, c minus a. You'll notice I keep referring back to the formula. It's because it's one that I don't have memorised, and I don't expect anyone else to have that memorised. It's one that you're, you're totally fine to go keep looking it up. 2 over x minus a. Alright. 
over b minus a, c minus a. So that means that we're looking at the function of 2 is going to be 2 lots of 2 minus a, which is 2, 4, over b minus a, that's 12, times c minus a, 3. So that's 4 over 36, which is obviously 1 ninth. Now our base is 2, so the area of, tri of, of area, one, area 1, so area 1 is going to be 1 ninth times a half times 2, which is just 1 ninth. Right. We're now going to have a look at area 2, I'm going to have to move this around a little bit so that I don't run out of room. area 2. Right, so this time what we're wanting to know is the function of 8. This time we're going to use the second equation. 2 over b minus a over b, b minus x over b minus a b minus c. And so we've got our f of x, our f of 8, is going to be the f, the f of 8 is going to be 2 lots of 12 minus 8, which is 2 lots of 4, which is 8, over 12 minus 0, which is 12, times b minus c, 12 minus, what was our c? 3. 12 minus 3 is 9. Twelve times nine. Okay, so we've got eight over. We've got eight over one hundred and eight. Which is the same as two over twenty-seven. Okay, this time our our base is not two. Our base is four. So the area two. Going to be a half times four times two twenty sevenths, which is going to be four twenty sevenths. Right, so the final area, area three, is going to be one minus four twenty sevenths minus one ninth. Right, one ninth is three twenty seven, so the answer is going to be twenty over twenty seven. And if area three is twenty twenty seven, then the probability that x is between let's check, make sure I'm two and eight. Equals twenty over twenty seven. So that's a few examples of, of how to work out a triangular distribution. Hopefully uh, that's helpful, and, and, and you'll see how to do those for any sort of situation you might see.